Creepypasta games are pretty well known in the online horror community, and honestly a lot of these games are considered cheesy or downright ridiculous. However, some of these games are actually pretty good. Maybe even scary. Today, combining some of my own finds with some suggestions from you guys, I'll be covering a few creepypasta games that are actually scary. I did this once before, so if I missed a game you want to cover, check that and just last year in general because I covered a few creepypasta games last year. With that being said, check out my social media link below and I hope you enjoy this one. Godzilla NES is an extremely popular game in Creepypasta that was originally released in 2011 by Cosby Daff on a horror site called Bogleash. This story is pretty heavily regarded as one of the greatest gaming and honestly greatest overall Creepypasta of all time. It's also an extremely long story, boasting 8 full chapters and an epilogue. If you really want to understand the story without reading it in its entirety, Billy Styler has a phenomenal video that gives you everything you need to know. All you need to know for this specific game I'll be covering is the first two chapters though. The game this story is based off of, Godzilla Monster of Monsters, is split into eight planets. Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune, and Planet X. A lot of the boss monsters are also on multiple planets, except for King Ghidorah who is only on the final planet. This will make some of this game make more sense to you. Just like in the story, the game seems normal enough all until you get to the first boss, Gizora. If you're unlucky in the regular game, Gizora will back you into a corner and hold you there by jumping and trying to hit you with its tentacle. Although annoying, this usually wouldn't be creepy or anything. However, in this game, things go left. Everything on the screen gets jumbled with Gizora turning a strange dark red. Attempting to replay the level causes it to be completely normal. Same with the next boss, Moguera. The rest of Earth is perfectly normal, and as we go into Mars, things are clearly different. This is because there's a sprite for a monster called Titanosaurus, which is not in the original game. Other than that, things seem normal until we get to Gezora again. This time the fight goes smoothly, but for some reason after defeating it, the screen becomes scrambled again with Gezora's eyes appearing all over the screen. Moguera is also completely off, being much larger and harder to defeat for some reason. Even weirder is that after defeating it, it melts instead of the usual defeat animation. Things just keep getting more and more off in this game. Certain levels become glitchier as well, like this one where the attacks moth or fires look like Gizora's eyes. Gizora also appears briefly in this level. The Titanosaurus fight is cool, but actually perfectly normal. It's almost like it was supposed to be in the original game. The rest of Mars is fine as well, but then we transfer to the next planet, Pathos. Now, you might be confused. I didn't name Pathos earlier in the list of planets that existed in the original game. Well, that's because it didn't. In this game, this is the final planet, and I can promise you it's the weirdest one of all. The level icons in this level are replaced by completely different icons, and although the layout of this place is the same as Jupiter, the pads have changed from green to blue. There's also a new monster called Biolante. This also doesn't make a lot of sense, as this game came out a year before that character was even introduced. The first level of Pathos is extremely odd. A red moon, strange mountains, and no enemies at all. Not even any obstacles. Well, that's in the story. In the game, there actually are some creepy enemies and obstacles starting on the third screen of the level. Plus, did you notice that strange face on the moon? I'm sure that won't be important for the future or anything like that. The next level of the planet is laid out very similarly, with a pretty creepy obstacle sitting in the player's way. This is the monster Vadon floating over some strange vat. After destroying it, you get to fight the monster, but the boss battle is completely normal. The next level is the same layout, however the boss Gazora is no longer its usual squid self, but replaced by some type of strange alien creature. This boss is also pretty difficult and has some strange attacks, but that's about it. When it's defeated, the screen glitches out as it turns back into its original form. Moguera is also replaced by a strange alien creature, and when defeated, the same glitch happens. A new level is introduced, a cave that's covered in orange eyes, some of which attack you and some of which turn to look at you in the background. There's also these weird eye monsters that swipe at you. One of the levels even has a giant mass of eyeballs that you have to fight. Creepy, to say the least. 
Another type of level introduced is a different type of cave with a lot of strange enemies including this giant boss guy who looks like he's straight out of Berserk. In a different cave there are strange Metroid like enemies, zombies, and a boss that really resembles Mother Brain. I can definitely say they went all out on this one. There's a galaxy level with weird glitch enemies that ends with an alien who just makes the game go absolutely insane. Before fighting Titanosaurus you go through a level that looks like a bunch of blood vessels while fighting a ton of creepy enemies. The game continuously glitches as well and the theme of the level makes it even creepier. Titanosaurus is completely transformed, looking even cooler than before. It looks like a living fossil, launching sound beams at the player. When it gets defeated it causes more glitching and seems to get stuck for a minute. Then we get to Biolante which actually goes perfectly normal. That means something bad is about to happen. The final level has this weird red face on it. Kinda looks like that face in the moon from earlier, huh? With the top of the screen reading run and fire in the background, we immediately see some type of large figure run in the background before it begins to give chase. A large alien-like monster with spider-like legs and the same red face that we've seen twice before. It continues to chase the player no matter where they run, always swiping just out of reach. It continues to get faster and faster, changing directions to try to catch you. Eventually the screen begins to glitch more and more as the word run begins to fill in with the color red at the top of the screen. After the second letter is colored in, the screen becomes obscured to the point that you can only see the silhouettes of both characters. Once the final letter is filled in, Godzilla is attacked and that's the end of the game. Of course in the story there's like 6 more planets and a bunch more stuff but this game added a lot to the planets that they included and the final sequence was phenomenal. The game will be linked below if you want to play it yourself. Mario has so many creepypasta and subsequently so many creepypasta games that it was kinda hard for me to pick a game to showcase. So I decided to showcase a ROM hack that I really enjoy that's also not based on a creepypasta at all. But it really could be a creepypasta game, okay, so just bear with me. Eyeless is a really good Super Mario World ROM hack that I always found unsettling and creative. The game starts off with a message saying, get your eyes back. We can see an eyeless Mario standing in the darkness on one lone platform. After running over to some type of spring platform that I struggled to use. Come on, I'm... I'm not very good at this. I'm just gonna be honest here, I struggled with everything in this game. You traverse these platform. What the? I'm not very good at this game. Like I was saying, you traverse these platforms and enter a door. This leads to another door that leads to a room with these floating ghost blocks. Here you have two options, or really two more doors. The first door you arrive at leads you to a room with a useless block and right back to the original room. The second door, however, leads you to this dark room that has a pretty cool disco ball mechanic. I remember this was used in Bowser's Castle in the original Super Mario World. After hitting some hidden blocks, you're able to drop down to- <sighs> Alright. Anyway, you're able to drop down to this area with these Mecha Koopas, and through yet another door, you get to an unreachable P-switch with some ghosts and... Another door. Then we get to this pincher bullet swimming section where I quite literally died at least 20 times. If I remember to count I'll put it on the screen but you can see how much I'm dying on screen right now. My terrible gameplay was much scarier than the game itself. After a couple more doors you get back to the p-switch room, only this time it's underwater. By using the p-switch you can get rid of the blocks to the far right of the area and go off screen. After this you enter pitch black water and after swimming up, you get to grab a mushroom. After getting your power up, you go through another door and... My game crashed, but I promise there's more to this game, okay? So let's keep going. Unfortunately, no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to work after this point, but I did find some gameplay to use, so shout out to Joytail for the ending. Basically, you get back into the room with the block, jump out of the pinchers, and walk into a final room that says, You can't do that. Eyes are lost forever. That was the ending. But then they released a super special director's cut of the game that basically completely changed the ending, so I guess I gotta talk about that. Due to my disastrous gameplay of the original game and frankly laziness, I'll be using all of the gameplay for this part from Self Made Island, so please check them out. The game starts out the same way with the same message, but immediately going into it, the game is completely different. 
The player is forced to jump into a chasm and go into a door, and then another door, and then after some platforms, another door, and then we get to the first major obstacle. There are platforms you have to jump on while avoiding big bubbles, yes, those are the actual name from Super Mario World, and there are several false doors along the way. Finally, you'll reach a door with an arrow over it, and that's the actual door you're supposed to use. The next room is even more difficult, being the same as the previous room with the addition of ice level physics, causing Mario to slide around on the platforms. The same goes for the next room. After that, you have to traverse platforms with the disco ball tool, only you also have to avoid enemies, which makes things even more hectic. This causes you to enter a room with a text block that says, Light can show the hidden truth behind darkness. Very ominous. After this, you can go into a room with a P-switch that, when pressed, causes this creepy theme. You'll have to listen to that for the next couple of rooms since you have to use P-switches for those as well. Eventually, through trial and error, you'll find out that if you jump off to the left in this door hallway, there will be a secret door, and much like the original, you'll have a room full of water with a mushroom. After this, you can get to a room with blind ghosts and pincher plants, and by walking on the pinchers, you can cross through a pipe that leads you to... Well, I'll just show you. The ending was very similar to the Mario creepypasta game. Just kinda nothing. I thought both iterations of this ROM hack were pretty interesting, and honestly, if you gave this to the right person off eBay, they might think it's a real creepypasta game. The only game franchise that contains more creepypasta than Mario is probably Sonic, with the infamous Sonic EXE creepypasta quite literally creating an entire genre of games that are still very popular to this day. Speaking of those, I was recommended a game called Friendship, a Sonic 2 creepypasta, and I was immediately intrigued. For those of you that don't know, I actually have a couple of pretty popular Sonic creepypasta videos on the channel, so I really wanted to make sure I included at least one Sonic game in this video. That being said, let's get into the game. By the way, the gameplay will randomly switch from the remake to the original, and that's something I'll explain as time goes on. As the game starts, we can immediately see that something's wrong, as the text showing Tails' name is scratched out. Oh, why is Tails all cut, cut up? Sonic also looks very sad in the title screen with Tails nowhere to be found. The intro levels of the remake and original were completely different. With the remake, the level is pretty much the exact same as the original, with rings and enemies, while in the original the level is a barren wasteland with every TV being pre-crushed. After beating the level, we go immediately to Chemical Plant Zone, which is kind of odd. This level is exactly what made me switch from the remake to the original, mainly because I couldn't use the ramp to jump to the upper part no matter what I did. So this might... Hey, what happened? It's blocked off. I guess I have to go this way? Nah, I can't get up there. It's blocked off. I've tried all my techniques, dude. We're just stuck. Maybe I was supposed to go a different way? I don't know. This is nothing like the other one. All right. That's what was supposed to happen in the other one. Thank you. That's all I asked for. What just happened? I also accidentally jumped right into the next area. This is the death egg zone where we find Tails, his body completely destroyed. After Eggman runs away, Sonic walks up to Tails' body and this happens. Unfortunately. I'm supposed to be fastest, but it was too slow to save my buddy. What the? <laughs> oh man, the voice acting caught me off guard. I, I didn't even know this game. I, I didn't think this system had the capacity. Man, my life is strange. Never realized that before. Anyway, after that, Eggman sets a bomb off that causes the death egg to explode. And as Eggman escapes in his Eggmobile, Sonic falls to the ground. Unfortunately, he doesn't survive. And as the next level starts, we see that Sonic has turned into this really cool ghost sprite. The level is pretty much laid out the same, the only difference being that it's of course much darker and has different music. I was pretty convinced at this point that Sonic would get revenge on Eggman in his ghost form. Yeah, there's no way we can't get revenge now, like I'm literally a ghost. If there's anybody that should be able to destroy Dr. Eggman, it's probably something that he can't even attack. However, after getting to the end of the level, this happened. Okay, go Sonic. Hey! Sonic, kill him, this is your chance! Oh, he's all sad. What's he doing? Why'd he make that face? 
normal ending. I don't want that ending. Give me a new ending. Determined to get revenge for Tails, I set out on my quest to get the alternate ending. This is how that went. All right, boys and girls and everybody in between. I have figured it out. Dude, there's like a secret dark emerald in somewhere in here and I got to find it. But I know because I I, che I checked a YouTube video. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I looked at a YouTube video and there's like a secrety dark emerald. I can promise you there's a secret dark emerald. <laughs> okay. Somewhere in here, I just don't know where it is. This is the problem. I just gotta be real careful. No, it's not it's not here. It's not here. It's not here. Is it back here? I I know I saw it. I, I know where it is. It's up here, it's up here. It's up here. Haha! -ha! A dark emerald. Now, wait a minute. You're probably like, well, what's that gonna do? Dude, trust me. I'm getting the better ending. I'm getting the better ending, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Okay, we know we're about to beat you up. And then jump on your head like this. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Yeah. I am about to destroy this guy, dude. I'm supposed to be fastest. No, I'm gonna be fastest. You are fastest, Sonic. You are fastest, Sonic. Don't worry. You're about to destroy this guy, dude. We're about to cook. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have confidence. I'm gonna do this thing. First try. Let's do this thing. Let's, let's do it. I'm about to eviscerate him. Here we go. Come on, Sonic. Get mad. Get mad. Yeah, get mad. Yeah. He's powering up, baby. Time to cook. Time to cook, Sonic. Get mad. Come on. Yeah, you can do it. Come on, Sonic. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Sonic. Get mad. Die. I'm, I'm cooking them. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely vicious. Oh, I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. It's okay. You know, you could try to hit me if you want. Oh, I really needed that one. It's okay. I got him anyway. <laughs> I did it. I did it. First try. Yeah. Vengeance. Vengeance. I'll take that. Why is it still sad? Am I still dead? Oh. Rest in peace, Tails, man. At least I at least I tried. At least I at least I defeated Eggman, dude. Alright, I guess that's the end. I guess that's the end of my wonderful gameplay. I have no idea if I'm gonna use any of this commentary, but uh thanks for watching the video. If I do use this, and uh Yeah, we got a couple subjects left, so uh let's get into those. Pokemon Lost Silver is a game that I covered in my previous Creepypasta Games video. It's based off a very famous Pokemon Creepypasta and contains two endings. The main ending and a hidden ending. For years, that was how the story was portrayed in game form. However, as of 2022, a game called Pokemon Re Lost Silver was released. This game would offer an extremely large addition to the game, with a completely new storyline and a new hidden ending. Of course, I had to play through it. Like the last part, I'll kind of combine clips of my commentary in with me describing portions of the game. For the main new ending, what you need to do is follow the original path up until you get into the graveyard room. When you do, change the unknown in the team to spell died he instead of he died. If you do this right, unlike me the first time, you'll end up in a maze of graves. So we're going to see if that works. Let's see. Let's just stand here and see. Come on. Yes. It worked. You have one Pokemon at this point, a Houndoom nicknamed Forever. After walking through the maze, you'll fall into a hole which will take you to an alternate version of the Ruins of Alf. There are a few different things here. 
First is a puzzle room which will be very important in the future. Next is this house with a scientist that says this if you talk to him. I'm no longer sure what the unknown are trying to tell me. Huh? Please turn back now. Afterwards the screen goes black. I honestly thought I crashed the game for a second. And by using flash you'll realize you're in a completely new area. Walking down the hallway will get you to a pokeball which contains whatever this is. The final room is the same as the caves in the ruins of Alf, but nothing else special. Back to the puzzle room. At first I attempted the puzzle by myself and got it completely wrong. Oh no. Something right. But I fixed it. Something ain't it. There it is. There it is. Yes! Solving this puzzle sends you to an alternate version of the previously shown Ruins of Alf room, and after walking around forever, we'll learn a move called Nightmare. After that, you'll meet a red eyed unknown. You. D. E. Using the ladder in its place will take you to a place with a new puzzle room, and as you can see, I was very happy about it. Oh no, another puzzle? Ah oh, shoot! It's harder than the last one! After a little bit of struggling and some belief in myself, I figured it out. Um, something's wrong. I got it on my own! I got it on my own! Would you believe it? Again, you'll end up in a similar space with forever learning thrash. Then you'll meet another red-eyed unknown. Also, I always want to know why shiny unknown didn't have a red eye, but... You know. There's a lot of strange shiny Pokemon that aren't very good. I. So, D-I. I'm, I'm sure that sounds good. Leaving will take you into another mountain. And when coming out, you'll be able to see several ledges to jump over. If you're smart, though, you won't do what I did. I broke it. Why did I do that? Aw, oh, dude, I gotta redo everything. After replaying back to that point, I was able to go into the right area, and at this point, I was admittedly getting into the puzzles. Yeah, alright. Another day, another beautiful puzzle. I'm just gonna become a puzzle speedrunner, guys. Sorry. The Gearisco channel is done because I'm speedrunning puzzles now. After solving the puzzle, you're sent into the same area as usual and we meet another red-eyed unknown. Oh, I got a totodile. What's it got? Tackle, all right. Huh. Ah, could be worse. That was, could be worse. E, D-I-E. Okay, that's not very nice, is it? After going through another mountain area, we get another puzzle. Hey, let's do this one. I'm I'm addicted to puzzles, dude, unfortunately. I'm literally gonna have to go, like, play um, original like, gold, crystal, and hard gold, and soul silver, and just do all the puzzles, dude. I just wanna do puzzles now. Spot. Oh, yeah. After solving it, we enter the usual room, but there's no unknown here. After taking the ladder, we end up in an alternate version of Sprout Tower, where the Elder says this to us. You are indeed skilled as a trainer. As promised, here's your HM, but let me say this. You should treat your Pokemon better. The way you battle is far too harsh. Pokemon are not tools, and tools of war. That's what he tells uh, your rival. When you try to leave, you'll be confronted by your rival, and you'll enter into a battle where he has five unknown and a Totodile. The unknown spell out sorry. After defeating him, he looks like he's physically deteriorating. You then leave and end up in another tower, the same from the original ending where you fight Red. If you go to the pillar and talk to it, however, this happens. Here we go. All right. Now we got something going on. Celebi. Regular Celebi. Eflosion. And an egg. This version of Ilex Forest is a mess. And yeah, I'll just let the clips talk for themselves.
Okay. Where will you go? That's what I'm asking myself, dude. I'm lost. Oh, wait, 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 wait. A building. Ah, this should do something. <laughs> Did it do anything? We're still lost. It's probably a good sign. That I'm going the right way. In here? No, this isn't actually a room. What does this say? Another Celebi grave. Am I going the wrong way? Oh, wait. Yes. Yes, this is something. After finally escaping the forest, you'll end up in Goldenrod City. Here, everyone has something to say to Gold. This will lead to breakthroughs in Pokemon research. Makes me proud, Gold. You will fly to the greatest heights. Make me proud, Gold. Um, I believe in your iron spirit. Make me proud, Gold. Hi, I know who you are. You've been everything but normal. Make me proud, Gold. Waha! Keep up the strong fight. Make me proud, Gold. Humph, your strength gives me chills. Make me proud, Gold. I have learned something from you, uh, my studies. Not seeing you succeed bugs me. Make me proud, Gold. I have trained in Ecritique all my life. I can see a bright future for you. Make me proud, Gold. As the world's best Dragon Master, I command you. Make me proud, Gold. Like a dragon, you are virtually indestructible. Make me proud, gold. Complete your journey like you completed the Pokédex. Make me proud, gold. If it's what you must do, then I can't stop you. Please be safe, gold. At this point, I was pretty motivated for whatever the game was gonna throw at me. I'm motivated, dude. I'm gonna, whatever it is, I'm gonna do it. Afterlife, oh, he awaits. Whether it's the afterlife or not, I'm gonna destroy it, dude. And I'm gonna win. After making it to the top of the tower, we finally face it. Oh, oh, it all comes down to this battle. I am not losing this fight, dude. I'm motivated. I am not losing. All right. Celebi lead is insane on this fight, though, but okay. This isn't gonna do anything. Oh, we're gonna get cooked. We're gonna get cooked. We're gonna get cooked. Can I please switch? No, 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 no. This isn't gonna work. We can't take a sacred fire. We're dead. It's a fine. We have we have Typhlosion. Doesn't matter. It doesn't. Selby was. Hey, what happened? Well, that didn't work out. Your team also spells out a message with the five unknown you now own. Wait. Uh huh. Burnt. And then we got away. Selby. After this, the game ends as normal with you fighting Red turning into a ghost, and eventually meeting yourself only to be laid to rest. The only part I missed in my recording was this easter egg where you can walk around as a ghost and look at some game screenshots and fan art. There's also a hidden secret ending though, and I'll give you some prior context before I show you the clips. Easter egg Snow on Mount Silver is a creepypasta wherein the protagonist's brother decides to mess around with the game shark and his copy of Pokemon Silver, despite the protagonist telling him not to. He would go through all the cheats possible, eventually writing out a code referring to said Mount Silver Easter Egg. Whatever was on the game scared the brother so bad that he destroyed his system and the Game Shark, but not the game itself for some reason. The protagonist decides to check the game out, and this is what they see. So basically from my understanding, we go to the Pokedex. Aha. Okay, we go to unknown mode. Okay, there we go, it's backspace. So we press this. S N O S W No wait U V W Snow Okay We're walking really slow Let's look at our team I'm cold Let's look at our team It says Blake by the way in the in the name Some of you might know what this is a reference to some of you We got a Typhlosion for alligator, a meganium, Pidgeot, <laughs> a Pidgeot, uh, Tyranitar, and a Lugia. And as you can see, the character is named Blake. Um, and they're very cold, and they have uh, everything. They have everything. All the money. Oh, whoops. Didn't mean to do that. All the Pokemon seen and owned, of course. All the, all the stuff. No, no other stuff. But they got that. Let's see what happens. Meganium has died. Oh, what happened? Whoa, 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 whoa. It doesn't have any eyes. What the heck is going on? I can't believe it. 
Oh man. Jeez. Pidgeot has died. No, no, that can't be right. I guess we'll check all of them, just to be fair. Oops. Didn't mean to use fly, it's dead. It can't do that anymore. Yeah, no eyes, no bottom. Tyranta, how are we gonna win the fight? All our Pokemon are already dead. Oh. Man, I think something's wrong with my game. Boogie is dead. I don't remember this part. Oh. I like how some of them, they just lose their eyes, but the other ones like lose like big parts of their body. Alligator's dead. Can I turn towards the stairs? Oh, lost the arm too, unfortunate. There we go. I need this ball, wait! <sighs> Who are you? Oh, hey. Celebi. Yeah, my bad. I did, I did you kind of raw. Oh. I'm so cold. I can tell you're walking really slow. Oh, yeah. Mother. Oh, lord. Because all we have is a Typhlosion. It's dying, so that's not good. Okay. Go, go. You can do it. Feels so cold. So is this how he died originally? Is that what we're trying to say? I know this is a reference to Snow on Mount Silver, but... I can't go on. Yes, you can. You can do it, Gold. Remember what everyone was telling you? You did it. Keep going, Gold. You can do it. Keep walking, man. Aha! Who's this guy? This is Red. Hey, Red. Help me out, man. Battle time. Alright, what's this? Red wants to battle. Then out Venusaur. Oh, that's not very good. Level zero! <laughs> you can't beat me! Ah, oh, jeez, stop! Oh. Yeah, I think I know exactly where this is going. And not Snorlax. Ew. What's happened to him? What's what's with the bottom of him for real though? I, it looked like he had a stake. This is bottom. It's not Espeon. Oh, I'm missing a leg. It's kind of graphic. Jeez. Jeez, for the Game Boy Color? I didn't have rated M yet. Come on, guys. No, I think they definitely did. I don't know why I said that. Blast toys. Not bad. Charizard looks so cool. That looked awesome. Whoa. Pikachu's been all shriveled. Oh, I died. It's over. That's a nice noise. Is that not gonna stop? Is that it? Okay, that was it. Um... Great stuff. I really don't have anything else to say. I like the Snow Amount Silver remake. I like everything that's been going on. I don't know. Should I end this off like I ended off the last one? Uh, I guess I'll just say we got another subject. So stay tuned. And thanks for watching. Wow. All right. I'm out of here. An ordinary Sonic ROM hack is an ordinary Sonic ROM hack with some creepypasta elements. It contains several levels from the original Sonic game, and actually works on several real systems which we found out thanks to a video from Red Hot Sonic. But alright, what exactly are the creepypasta elements of this game? Well, rather than tell you, this time, I'll just show you. Starting up the old Genesis. My very real Sega Genesis, by the way. This is real. Alright, very regular Sonic- Oh! Oh, who's that? I also am playing with a keyboard and I don't know the controls. Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh, ow. We're not that good at Sonic, so this is already a bad... Uh-oh. What has happened, guys? It's over, boys. We're gonna... Ouch. We're gonna get eaten by Sonic. I'm stuck! I might actually- I might actually wipe. No way, no way, no way, don't- Jeez. I can't believe I actually almost just lost right there. As you can see, after a certain amount of time, Sonic EXE will show up and begin to chase the player. 
Unless you can find a TV, your fate is pretty much sealed. For me, this got frustrating pretty quickly. How did I already get stuck twice? Oh no. It's Sonic. It's Sonic EXE, dude. <laughs> no. Are you kidding me, dude? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my. Okay. Where's the TV? 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 Are you serious? Help. Where's the end of the game? Where's the end of the game? That's not fair! What? Oh, uh, what the? I got to the end of the level! Look, he's all broken up! <laughs> Look! That's funny, dude. He's... He's just glitched out of his mind, dude. He just transcended the fabric of reality. Oh, what the? I just... That's nice. This isn't fair. Oh my god, what am I supposed to do? There's one. Yep, yeah, I tried it, you stupid idiot. Thank you! Thank you! I beat the first level! Let's go! I'm sure based on how much I personally struggled, you're probably wondering how many levels this game actually has. Well, besides the debug mode that has a ton of different levels, the main game has all of Green Hill Zone, Marple Zone, Spring Yard Zone, and Labyrinth Zone. I think that attempting to beat this game would be much scarier than any creepypasta. Although, if you guys really wanted me to make a full video out of my ordinary Sonic ROM hack experience, I would actually put effort into beating the game. Either way, I think we can all agree that the prospect of a monster chasing you and dealing with the issue of actually finding the TVs is much scarier than Sonic EXE just popping up and jump scaring you. Would definitely recommend checking this game out if you're into Sonic stuff.